Hey guys, uh, we are going to get the last video of the week. This is for uh, Kafka's The Metamorphosis. This is our Friday reading, which will take us to about the midway point of the book. Um, and so we are picking up with kind of a little bit of a time passage scene. Now, before we get to that, there's a little bit more about the food where we left off in the last session. Um, Gregor discovers he can only eat, uh, he can't eat fresh foods. It doesn't, it, that just doesn't sit with him. So he's forced to eat, you know, it's not that it's gross food, but it's still, it's, it's more in line with what you would expect a bug to eat. Kind of supposed to highlight the bestial nature he has. He can't enjoy the fresh things he needs to eat the other nasty garbage type stuff. Um, but that scene, what really sticks out to me is that, and they, and Kafka goes out of his way to kind of annotate this. That when the sister goes to pick up the food, when she's trying to figure out what it is he will eat, she throws out everything, even the stuff he didn't touch, she throws away because it's contaminated. Uh, which, of course, that makes sense. He's a bug. We would all react the exact same way. I mean, most of us wouldn't be trying to feed the bug. <laughs> but and there is this element that even though his sister loves him, she's still disgusted by him. And again, this kind of is going to speak to a little bit of, of Kafka's belief that even the people that loved him didn't really love him. Uh, Kafka is a very disturbed man, and um, it's so sad to learn more about him, about the way he felt. And a lot of it, you know, because of his family life, and you, you hate to see that. But then there was nothing about the real world that made him feel loved either. I mean, if you go to a job that sees you again as a cog in a wheel and that you're not important and that you are very replaceable and that if you even slip up the smallest amount, well, we're just going to fire you and find someone else, that doesn't make you feel good. That doesn't make you feel useful. And um, so – this poor man, and he, you know, he, he's writing things that he that were brilliant at the, you know, now that we look at them in hindsight. But he felt they were terrible. And to be honest, the people who probably read them and didn't know his situation didn't get it. So, um, you know, this image of his sister just throwing away stuff because he came near it, it, it kind of hurts him a little bit. All right. Um, he also realizes that the feedings that he's given are timed so that his family doesn't have to watch him. Um, so you kind of get this feeling that they do know this is. Perhaps they know this is Gregor, um, and that's why they haven't just killed him. They don't know what to do at this point. Um, all right, so then we get this little time passage part where several days pass. It's kind of an author's technique they'll use, um, but he's been eavesdropping and listening to what they say. And this is the way we're going to get some more exposition tossed in that we need to know. And mainly it's about finances, okay? Um so the first part, this is a little bit of a long passage, but I really want to read to you. It talks about initially when Gregor was paying the bills, how he uh, felt and how his family felt. So let me read this section to you. It says, Gregor's concern at the time of the bankruptcy. Now, sorry, I should have given you some context here. Gregor's father's company had gone bankrupt in the little section I didn't read. This is Gregor's concern at the time of the bankruptcy. He had been to arrange everything so that the family could forget as soon as possible that financial misfortune that had brought them to a state of complete despair. And so he had begun to work with pronounced fervor. Practically overnight, he was elevated from a minor clerk into a traveling salesman, which naturally gave him completely different financial prospects. His success at work translated directly into cash that he could lay on the table at home before his astonished and pleasing family. Those had been fine times, but they had never recurred, at least not with the same warm feelings, although Gregor later earned so much money that he was in a position to support the entire family, and he did so. They simply got used to it, the family, as well as Gregor. They gratefully accepted his money, and he gladly offered it, but that special warmth did not reappear. So look at the, that right there. I can imagine if that was real, and if Kafka maybe went through the same thing, how traumatic that could be. Because, you know... I realize we are all like this. You know, you get to this point where you do something nice for someone and then you continue to do it. And before long, it becomes obligation and it no longer is something that you're doing that's nice. And then all of a sudden you feel like if I stop doing it, um, is that going to make me look bad? And that's kind of the, the problem he's found himself in. And that should never be the case. We should be grateful for something. It doesn't matter if it's every week. We should always be thankful and grateful and always show gratitude. That should never change because people don't owe us these things. But um Poor Gregor feels that he did. He actually saving money, we learned, to put his sister through to the conservatory, which is a form of a music school, basically. And he's trying to save up for her, and now he can't even do that. So he feels it's not so much that, you know, that he realizes, man, I've got to get figure out what's wrong with me. Look at the situation I'm in. It's I'm letting people down. And that's one of the things that makes Gregor a really sympathetic character, that he does feel that way. He's a good person. He cares about his family, even though they don't seem to care about him in a lot of cases. But he knows that, hey, this is my duty and I want to do everything I can to help out. And that's really um, a, a thing that makes us a sympathetic character. 
We also learn a little bit more about finances. We learn that his father actually does have some money saved up. It's not a lot, but it's enough to let the family live on it for the next year or two. Um, so what's that detail about? Well, that detail's there. And remember, any uh, professional authors, <coughs> especially in literature, use every detail for a purpose. They're not there accidentally. It's not there to fill space. This is a very short novel. Kafka's not concerned about space. Kafka didn't intend it to even be published. He didn't want it out there. So um, this detail is important because what we learn is that that um, more than likely, Gregor wouldn't have had to have gone through as much as he did and done as much as he did because his family did have some money. They weren't completely dependent on him. And so he was being forced to do all this stuff he hated and disliked and was making him miserable just to support the family. Now, in his family's defense, as you can see from his mother's response, they didn't really realize because they, they weren't paying attention. I mean, they didn't realize how miserable he was. Um, and that happens a lot. A lot of times people don't realize how miserable others are, not because they're not showing signs, but because we're just not concerned. We're just too wrapped up in our own stuff. And uh, I feel like that's the case here. Um, but the constant discussions about money uh, force Gregor to just feel even worse. And he runs away from the door and hides under the sofa or the bed or something like that. Sofa, bed, same thing. Uh, hides under stuff. And um, it just makes him feel worse, makes him feel more useless than he already does as a cockroach. OK, um, OK, so that ends the reading for the first week. And that kind of drops us midway ish in the book, probably a little bit towards the front half. And uh, so next week, we're going to finish this and we're going to go through the rest of it and uh, see what all Kafka is building through this. This is a very famous work. I don't know if you've ever heard of it before, but it's an exceptionally famous book. Um, it's been part of high school reading for a long time. It has slowly fallen out of favor in high schools. And yeah, I mean, we do it in AP, but this is the first year I've actually taught it in AP. Um, so I feel like I'll use it again because I do like some of the stuff that, that Kafka does with his characters. So uh, that ends the Friday reading. So I hope that this wasn't too much for you. I did try to rearrange my stuff and not because of the uh, issues last week with a lot of you feeling like it was too much work, but because I wanted to do this for you um, as seniors um, to show you that I do care about you and that I'm not just like, it's not just about grades to me. I really am concerned. I hope this is useful. Um, I hope it makes you think. I do want you to think about the fact that we should be grateful to people who help us and to realize that not everyone who helps us is, is it's not super easy for some of them. Some of them struggle to do the things they do, but the, to, to be grateful to those around us who love us and treat us well and to be thankful for the situation you have because, you know, this is not a, an ideal situation. Look what this did to Kafka. So um, I hope you're enjoying some time with your families and letting them know that you love them and care about them and appreciate everything they do for you. All right. Uh, thank you guys for this week. Uh, I hope that you had a good one. Um, and I look forward to getting going again next week.